Hello guys, this is Joe Neville and I'm back with another BGP video. This is video 4 and in this one we're going to be looking at AS path and loop prevention. Loops are great if you are using them in coding or of course if you're on a roller coaster but not so great in networks where packets could be forwarded aimlessly without reaching their destination. Now at a basic level, routing protocols work by each device advertising the networks that it knows about because they're directly connected to them or because a neighboring device has said that it knows about a network. No device has an absolute view of the network that they are connected into. They just work with what the neighbors tell them and what they have plugged in locally. Now this can lead to errors in the process in the form of loops. Here in this simple example, each device reports that they can get to network 10 slash 8, but each time a device does a routing table lookup, the result is always that the best path is the clockwise neighbor. Therefore, any packets destined to 10 slash 8 will be forwarded onwards round the loop, and then they'll be dropped when the time to live or the TTL in the IP packet header expires. This is obviously a bad thing and to stop this happening routing protocols have loop prevention mechanisms built in. If you think the RIP has the hop count, OSPF uses the link state database, well external BGP uses ASPath. ASPath is an attribute that's included in BGP updates, it's a well known mandatory attribute. Well known means that it needs to be known by all BGP speakers and mandatory means that it must be included in all BGP updates. Okay here is the network that I will be using for this example. Slightly different from the previous videos I've included an extra VSR again all running on my laptop. What we have is four VSRs two are in the same AS 65001 I'm going to advertise this is the prefix that we're going to be focusing on 172.30/24 and we're going to advertise it out across eBGP to these neighbors and see what happens here we have putty sessions into my VSRs I'm going to start top left with VSR 101 down here you can see the diagram so we're going to be advertising this 172.30/24 locally off of the VSR I've just included it as a loopback bearing in mind uh, if you've watched my previous videos I've actually blocked this connection between 101 and 102 so there's no connection between those any prefix that's advertised will have to go out across and down to the VSR okay into BGP into the address family let's create a network statement there we can see the prefix in the BGP routing table let's get some extra information Right, because it's locally generated, we don't see anything in the AS path at the moment. It's when the prefix is advertised that we will see the AS path. Thus, we expect to see AS path in the neighbor's BGP routing table. Let's have a look at the neighbor. So that is VSR201 that's connected via eBGP. There we go, we can see it. Let's get some extra information. All for bows. And you can see the AS path of 65001. That's where the prefix has come from, and that's why it's in the AS path VSR 101 appended AS 65001 to the AS path when it advertised the prefix in its BGP update. Now let's have a look at VSR301. There we go, you can see the prefixes in the BGP routing table and 
compare those two AS paths. So we can see that it's longer. Here we've got 65001, here we've got 65002 and 65001. It's important to recognize that the way to read the AS path is from left to right is from new to old. So the new AS path, so the directly connected AS path 65002 is on the left there and the older AS path, so the originating AS path is the one on the right. That's important when you're trying to read where a prefix has come from. Thus we can see that the prefix has come from AS 65001 and then it's travelled to 65002 and now it's at 65003. Now the rule with AS path is that if a BGP speaker sees its local AS in a BGP update then it blocks the prefix. It doesn't allow the prefix to enter into its local BGP table and that stops the loops because if you think if these guys in this setup, these four, were to keep advertising that they could get to this 172.30 and that would go round to each one of the neighbours and that could create a loop. So what we what the process does is that when it comes back to a AS that's already in the AS path, it's dropped, thus breaking any kind of circle, any kind of loop from being created. Let's log into the final VSR in the path VSR 102. Bearing in mind it's in AS 65001 so we shouldn't see the prefix. Okay, here is VSR 102. And there we go, no roots, fine. Not particularly exciting. Let's illustrate that a bit more with some debugs. I turn on term mon with tm and term debug with td. debug BGP update. So quick and dirty what I'll do is I will shut the loop back on VSR 101. So that's the originating device. I've shut down the loop back. If we check on VSR 301 the prefix is no longer there. It's been withdrawn. I'll unshut and we should see the update go through the network Okay, that's what we were looking for. So we've got a debug BGP update and you can see that what actually happened is that VSR 102 received an update from its neighbor from 301 and it, here's the details. There's the AS path and you can see it's gone 65001, 002 and 003 and we've actually got a pretty easy to read message that tells us that it's been blocked. Okay, so we've got BGP error identified while receiving update message from the peer ignored. And we've got the reason looping in AS path value. And that's because there we can see 65001 in the update. So that means that this prefix has been blocked. And we can check that no roots. Okay, to take that a step further, because devices block prefixes that include their local AS in the AS path, manipulation of AS path attribute is a way to control prefix propagation within a network. Simple example, let's say that we don't want 172.30 slash 24 to appear on VSR 301. What we could do is we could just include AS 65001 in the BGP AS path when we're advertising our prefixes and then VSR 301 would block those prefixes. And that is called AS path prepending. So it's a way of controlling what your neighbor will include 
in their BGP routing table. And the way that we do that is using a route map, which in Conway is called a route policy. In a later video, I will step through the how to do route policies in detail but for now I'll just run you through the configuration. First of all on VSR 101 I create a route policy apply AS path and then you've got the option to put your AS number in there so we're going to put 65003 back into BGP address family unicast and what we do is we add it to a peer statement we're going to add it on on the peer statement from VSR 101 down to VSR 201 but it's actually going to affect the BGP routing table of VSR 301 because it's that device that will see AS65003 and it will block any prefixes coming from VSR 101. There's my root policy block AS65003 export to add that step to the prefixes that are sent out to peer 3333 because I'm in the lab just to force this I'm going to do a reset of BGP I'll just hit all so the VSR 101 is going to be adding AS65001 plus 65003 to its prefixes so we should see that on VSR201 have a look at the BGP routing table of VSR201 There we go. More detail. You can see it there. And actually notice that it's added before the true AS path of 001. So 65003 is added into the AS path as though it's been to that before it's been to 65001. Now let's have a look what that's done to, over on VSR301. We're expecting to not see this prefix in VSR301 now. There we are, it's not included because it will see its local AS in the BGP update, so AS path, and it will block it. I'll turn on the debug to prove it to you. bounce the loop back again and there we are we can see the error message VSR301 sees its local AS and it blocks it the reason looping in AS path value okay so that was loop prevention in BGP using AS path and we did a bit of AS path prepending to show how that can be used to influence and control the BGP routing tables of downstream neighbours. Hope you found that useful. Please do like, comment and subscribe. But that's all for now. I'll be back with another video soon. My name's Joe Neville. Thanks for watching and goodbye.